Wes Anderson is a huge fan of visual aesthetics. Despite the fact that his films have a great meaning and a deep message behind them, it is the visual aspects that most often come to mind when you think of Wes Anderson's work. These are just some of those features that photographers are constantly trying to replicate in order to make a Wes Anderson a picture. However, the director's works have many other more subtle differences. Fantastic Mr. Fox inherited some of its visuals from 1933 King Kong. At that time, the animals shown on screen were made out of dolls with real fur. It looked very natural, and that's what Anderson had in mind. Also, he told the production designers to use real textures of trees, sand, and other elements of the natural environment to create the background. One of the American critics who closely studied Anderson's personal style called his type of composition planimetric composition. It's when the central object is bright, saturated, or colorful, so it stands out against a more flat background. So not only the symmetry makes the object pop, but also the color and tone used in the clothing and the background. And to achieve this effect, Anderson also has a number of ways in terms of positioning actors in the frame. They can face the camera, walk away from the camera or stand to the side. Tilts are also made strictly following the rules of such composition. What we do is I have the camera assistants take a piece of tape, so we put one on one side of one map box and the other on the other side, and we always just run to the corners of the room to make sure the camera is right in the dead center. Despite the fact that we already talked about Wes using real fur, he prefers creating dreamy worlds. Right now, most directors are trying to let more air into their films and they allow their shots not to be perfect. But Anderson deliberately makes such sets that you cannot possibly encounter something like this in real life. People don't talk like that, people don't move like that. If you take this scene from Grand Budapest Hotel, it's a simple shot of a character walking down the hall, but it seems so unrealistic because people simply don't walk like that. And despite close to reality plots, contrary to some sci-fi movies, if you put them against each other, you'll rather believe that the sci-fi movie is something out of the real world, because you can imagine seeing this with your own eyes one day. But the same thing cannot be said about Wes Anderson's cartoonish, but really fabulous scenes. It can be best shown through a scene from the French Dispatch, don't forget to check it out in cinema, it's truly amazing. So the first story about Moses Rosenthal, an artist who mastered his talent in prison, opens up with a scene between Miniso del Toro and Lea Seydoux who poses for him. It feels like this scene lasts a long, long time, we hear calm music, we see the characters just standing still, and we await something not less than a masterpiece coming out of it. However, and spoiler alert, we understand that he's a prisoner, she's his guard, and there is something very abstract in the painting and not a naked woman. And that's the comedy of Wes Anderson's films. He is building towards something for a very long time to then completely mislead the viewer. I adore structure, so this particular feature of Wes Anderson's work is by far my most beloved one. And I heard some people saying that he does that simply because he lacks the professionalism to tell a full, coherent story without breaking it into several parts and without naming them, but whatever. I think Wes Anderson's titles attract no less attention than his famous symmetrical shots. What do you love about Wes Anderson's films, and which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to watch the French Dispatch, it's Wes Anderson at its finest. Have a nice day and never stop watching great films.